Hello and welcome to another episode of Pony 411. This is episode 275 for the week of September 8th, 2019. I am Alcatraz and joining me as usual is Nemesis. Transform and roll out. Of course you did. I got a new toy. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you and your, your Transformer stuff. Yes, I got a new toy. I'm quite happy with it. Uh, I, as we can see, or hear as the case may be. <laughs> I'm very happy with it. I bet you I are. I better be happy with it. I mean, I've spent $328 on it. Uh, I hope so. You well, know, that's I, probably, I, spent, that's, I spent $38 personally, but that's because I was yeah, able to... Star credits and stuff like oh, that. Credit card rewards. Yeah. I knew spending all that money would work out in the end. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, the trick is you spend money on things you have to buy anyway. That's what I'm doing. So it, it's, not, it's not buying stuff you don't need so that you can buy more things you don't need, which is usually the credit card would work. Anyway, yes. This week has definitely been um, a week. A thing. Some good, some crazy, some not so good. I've been having my own problems 3d printer and problems and then car problems that are Bleh. still haunting me to this day never know if my car is just gonna randomly you know, we're just gonna die now we're just gonna blow apart i guess out. i'll die i i guess today the day the thermostat is just gonna blow up again hey. uh, yeah you never know but good news sans <laughs> and twice yeah, sans in the news because there's the first time this week where it's oh hey guess what it's actually patrick He's actually Patrick, and then the second time, hey, look, he's in Smash now. Yep. <laughs> yep. Sans. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then you got, uh, what was it, Sakurai telling everyone to play Banjo on the Xbox on the Nintendo stream. It was like, what? What? <laughs> and everyone's laughing on the stream because, like, they're telling them to pay, play a non-Nintendo console. <laughs> Oopsies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... It's yeah. not an oops, it's just a weird yeah, it's thing. It's just weird. I think we've seen Microsoft advertise the Switch on their, at their press conferences, so what do we know? I know. Yeah, but Microsoft's marketing strategy has gotten very I interesting. I mean, they're I purposely pushing Xbox Live to the Switch. Nintendo Diversification Microsoft from Microsoft good, is very weird to see. They're in a good position now. Yep. They're, they're not... They're, they looked at... It's like they looked at what Sony was doing. They're like, no, it's Sony only, Sony only. It's like, we're going to do the opposite. <laughs> and then everyone rejoices. And everyone rejoices. Anyway. So, yes. But enough with those things. We are here to talk about ponies. <gasps> that, that's the point of this show. Sans ponytail. <laughs> Just no. <laughs> Just no. <laughs> Moving along, we do have things to talk about. We have more news this week than last week. Not by a huge margin, but still more. Uh, we got a couple things to talk about, including today's episode of mm -hmm. Pony, as expected, and a music video, a Quest for Girls music video yeah. to mention, as long as some fan content. So yes, we'll get to those. Starting off with the news, if you would like to follow along, and I recommend you do, you can check out our show notes at pony411.libsyn.com slash show notes go there click the link for this episode and let's get into the news in convention news alicon 2020 is happening and it's going to be a three-day event because they've been two-day events up until now so they're coming up to full three-day it's australia by the way yes it's the one down there uh, i don't believe they have a date set at least not as of looking but yeah. it will be three days so good for them they're getting bigger in fandom news, McFarlane Books is releasing a book titled Meet the Bronies, which is like a it's a psychological look kind of a, a thing into yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's a long study they've been they did. Yep. They've been we, we I think a lot of us actually participated in some of their stuff they did because they've been doing surveys and whatnot for quite a while. Yep. So now they're publishing a book about what they have found. Kind of spendy book, if I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. Uh, Forty but, bucks. Yeah. But it is there, it is a thing, so go check that out if you are interested. Yeah, it's actually out, out. Yes, out, out. Yeah, they say it's, it's not in like stock. a pre-order. Yeah, it says yeah. in stock, so, so it's out. Go buy that book. Or don't, it's 40 bucks. Or don't, I mean, if you want to. If you've got 40 bucks to spend. Anyway, 
that massive Pony Music Archive download that we talked about quite a while ago has been updated. So new songs and things like that. So if you keep track of that, go check it out. Original raw quality version, 730 gigabytes. Is big. Or you can just get the normal high quality version, which is only a paltry 130 gigabytes. Yes. Now, if I remember correctly, not everything in them is no. all that same quality. There no. is some things that are lower quality. There are some tagging things here and there, but with an archive that big, it's going to happen. But it's just some people don't even bother releasing in high quality. Yeah, some people, it just literally doesn't exist. So you just get the best that they happen to have. But it's there. Check it out if you're interested. In merchandise news, Rainbow Road Trip content has been added to the Game Loft Pony game. Kerfuffle or a riot? Yep. All the kerfuffles. All the picture. I saw in the main picture. She's not in the main picture. Is she there? There she is. Good. <laughs> yeah. If you didn't have kerfuffle, that would just be a crime. Yeah, everyone would riot. Cause what, what's the point if there's no kerfuffle? Exactly. I would cause a kerfuffle. <laughs> Uh, the old dressed to impress pony figure line that had been announced a while back will not actually be happening. It has been officially canceled and never came to full fruition. Mm -hmm. No hipster dash for you. Yep, no hipster dash for, dash for me. The McDonald's Happy Meal pony toy line is also apparently going to be including Spike and Starlight. At least for Mexico. We don't know if the other countries that had been getting this are going to get those as well. So far, we've only seen it for the Mexican release. So that's more garbage to your garbage. Oh. Unless they're chicken nuggets. McDonald's nugs. Still garbage. No, it's not. Don't diss the nugs. Do not diss the nugs. The Toys That Made Us Season 3 will be airing starting November 15th, and this is the season that has the episode... On MLP G4. No, oh, MLP and I think in general. In general, but we'll include the stuff about this current generation and all the things happen about that. It's one we've been looking forward to within our fandom. So that's coming up soon. So keep an eye out for it. Two more months, I guess. Yep. Ish. Into Equestria Girls news, Hasbro has finally uploaded more Equestria Girls shorts up onto YouTube. Ones that we've seen before on like the Discovery Go app. They include the Find the Magic Music video. Wake Up, Shake Up, and The Last Drop. Those mm. last two are the Choose Your Own Ending ones. Mm. And apparently, the Equestria Girls special Holiday Unwrapped has released early in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, if I remember correctly, there's no English audio options no, on this not. particular no, right one. Now. So, the English version isn't up yet, but the rest of it is. So, mm -hmm. And uh, it's weird, because... It, because it people are confused, like what you know, we were all confused. Like I thought that we were done with specials. And yeah. It turns out this one is actually like like was well, six or seven different shorts strung together, and not in a cohesive way like before. It's like like yeah, it's so weird. it's just like a weird anthology. Shorts yeah. Anthology. It's, they're also these are like seven minute long shorts versus like usual three minute long shorts. Ah, uh, interesting. So it, it's kind of weird. <laughs> it is. It's not a special, but it is a special, but it. Isn't the special? It's basically Hasbro decided to take a bunch of shorts that had a kind of common, I guess, theming mm -hmm. or whatever, and just smush them together. Smash and the writers didn't know, so they're just like, "We're done with the specials." And Hasbro's like, "No, you ain't. We got <laughs> well, one not more gonna tell you. coming eventually if you haven't already watched the Ukrainian version." But yeah, Ukrainian. It's a thing. It's out there. Be aware. And thankfully, it's not based on the stupid comic. And in the last bit of news, apparently the rest of the MLP season in English, as well as some unreleased scripts, have been released to the public via what appears to be a hack. Yep. I mean, like, we've already had the rest of the episodes dumped to the public because of the leak, but now they're I get out again. In English. In English. And here's the thing. What was it? It was this was someone who definitely knew what they're doing because they literally grabbed only the ones that aren't available in English. So twenty two through twenty six. Yep. Uh, these and when I say oh, that's the scripts, it's literally every single episode script. Yep. And apparently it includes the notes and stuff like, and undeleted scenes from the episodes that are in those scripts as well. Yeah, I'm not exactly happy that people even do oh. this. I mean, it's it a leak. Usually, if a leak is like an accidental release from an official source, 
or and uh, yeah it, it gets oh. released to someone and then dropped early accidentally or someone gets a hold of, of something that's supposed to come out but when someone actually goes out and play. goes out like this into internal documents and grabs never supposed to be released never actually released to third party information mm. and dumps it that's that's crossing a, a full moral line there I, I i do not approve of that at all yeah what was the other thing about it? Uh, oh, these the actual videos are actually like raw videos because each one is like ten gigabytes in size because it's the, oh. like full. You have to put it together yourself or have a that one. I can't remember what it's called that one program, MP something or whatever or M4. I don't know. Well, they're made in Flash, so it's gonna come out in some. Well, it's not that raw, but it's like you have to comp- you actually have to put the video and audio together yourself and. Oh yeah. Because like it's got all yeah it was because it's like again it's like the the like ten gigabytes for each episode yeah uncompressed raw video data and then probably uncompressed audio as well that mm-hmm. you have to combine and then convert into something yeah. to be released the other the really interesting thing is apparently among the scripts there's scripts for six shorts that have not been aired interesting six ml friendship is magic shorts that have not aired which is Huh. Looks like we're not 100% done with this. Unless, like, deleted scripts, we're not ever going to see them. It's possible. Well, the other things, like I said, those are all deleted scenes, not... Yeah. So yeah. It's like, it, it's... It's... They exist, which means at one point they're in production if they're not finished or whatever. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that we're going to see those before the, the finale or after or what. Yeah. I hope they don't think something like six shorts over the course of a year is going to sate people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I don't know what else they're going to do. Nothing. <laughs> what else? Are they? So it's like, it's better than nothing, I guess. But right. who knows if we're even going to see it. Their best bet is to just kind of let everyone, you know, set G4 fade away and from the public consciousness and bring back G5, bring in G5 in 2021. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, it's out there and released and means spoilers are... More pre- gonna be more prevalent because more people are gonna give in. Like I did, I was like, you know what? I will I not. Know. I refuse. I refuse I, to give in. I already had several close calls. I don't wanna, and I got one, a couple things already spoiled for me. So I just decided I'm just gonna go ahead and watch it so I can be free and clear. I I have yet to be really spoiled, and I'm gonna hold out as long as I can. Anyway, that is the end of the news. Yep. So moving on, we gonna start out with that Equest for Girls music video thing that did come out called Cheer You On. Yeah. Featuring Flash Sentry. Yep. Flash Sentry and his band sing a song and during it things happen. It's just a music video and Flash Sentry helps out, I guess. In a very, very minor way. <laughs> also, it's weird the way they, they actually title it. It's called Cheer You On featuring Flash Sentry and it's like, are they trying to use them as a selling point because like i don't it, it literally <sighs> is like dante from the devil may cry series it's like it's it feels just like that it's like what are you doing yeah i don't know it it was it's a thing the actual song itself was like eh, it, it's a whatever. thing I mean, it's not bad but it was I, really... I wasn't like super excited I'm over not it sure because and... people are talking about oh it's, you know vincent tong's great singing voice i'm like you do know this is really heavily auto-tuned, right? <laughs> I'm not sure if that's because they needed to or because it was a stylistic choice, but just letting you guys know, that's really heavily auto-tuned. Yeah. And yeah, it's just basically him singing about how he's okay being basically being in the background. Now, that's weird. Yeah. It's like... Being a supporting character. I'll support you. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's It's an odd thing of... Yeah. Yeah. Also, there's a giant robot that they fight, and there's a fir- someone pointed out it's a weird thing. Is like this is like the first time they really actually use their powers like superheroes would. Yes. <laughs> Rather than just oh, we're gonna use our heroes briefly, and then we're gonna ask all combined lasers. <laughs> yep. But I mean, I mean, this is the first time they actually use their powers in an actual f- fight. Yeah. Rather than and some other- somehow things. Sunset drops her gem, and that's where Flash comes in. Yeah, I mean, he gives it to her, and then okay. <laughs> sure sure and then they make a friendship laser and blow yep. up the, the robot yep <laughs> i mean you got like apple that was pretty cool just you know yeah there's there was good scenes down that were, the were neat. but overall it's just kind of yeah okay it's a thing 
moving on. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know why this exists. Because <laughs> they can. I would rather have a big cool, cool battle scene you know, an actual special thanks Hasbro for canceling the rest of them. Yeah, we could have something really cool, like you know, big, you know, a big nice wrap up for everything. But no, no. we had to cancel it. I guess that does kind of discolor the rest of these shorts, knowing that they did, knowing yeah. that they canceled the rest of the rest of the season. I have words about that. I want to say later about the whole Question Girls thing. Oh, particularly with the shorts. shorts. But that's for later. Not but that's now. for later because I go easily an hour about that, <laughs> like in front of a crowd of people. Say you know. Just saying. I don't know. Maybe you should do a panel on it. Yeah. Maybe I'll just wait forever for you to open up their applications. Maybe you should, you should do that. All right. I think it's time to move on to our main discussion point. We are going to talk about today's pony episode, and it is called Dragon Dropped. Quick synopsis. Rarity wants Spike to hang out with her. He doesn't. Rarity gets worried because this is unusual and finds out Spike has been hanging out with Gabby a lot. <gasps> Rarity gets jealous and successfully steals Spike back, to which Gabby gets really upset, and then this causes Spike to get really upset, and then Rarity has to apologize, and everything's better. Yeah. There you go. Nice and short. So, (laughs) this episode, there's a lot of things. (laughs) Overall, Tabitha absolutely made this episode. (laughs) This is once again a showcase of Tabitha's talent and for that it is it, it it's really fun to watch just watch tabitha just do tabitha's thing with rarity and it's it's great it, it really is overall i will say it is a fun episode just to just see rarity do what rarity does all, all the faces and antics and everything yeah. It's a lot of fun to watch all of that. It We're really muddies the whole Sparity thing, though. It's, kind it, of. It it's... kind of it, it, it plays to that, sort of, at least on yeah. Rarity's side, which is odd one. <laughs> and that's always a weird... Sparity is kind of weird because of age differences. I'm not a huge fan, and this doesn't really yeah. make that any better. But it also introduces... Spike and Gabby as a potential ship option? I don't know. It, it, it's, but it's also kinda kinda, it, it is. In that option, is kind of weird. I think the problem is they 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 don't want to commit one way or the other because they know there is a large number of Sparity shippers in yeah. the fandom and they know they'll be really angry if they kill it. But at the same time, I feel like, well, they really need to kill it because... It's creepy. It, it, yeah. The, if, if, <laughs> if it became canon, that would be creepy. Spike is a child. Mm-hmm. At, at, at the very oldest, he's a young teenager. Gabby's a weird thing because Gabby's implied to be young, but she's also kind of she's like griffins are. I don't know. Like I guess. Yeah, I think they're called gr- physically griffins. larger than ponies in general. So it's like, yeah. yeah, I would put Gabby probably in mid to late later teens. I don't know. It, it, it's, I would just based off of level, the seeming level of maturity. It seems like she's also somewhat the same size as a uh, Gallus. Yeah, around I would put put Gabby around the same yeah. age as as Gallus. And she's also, but the thing is, when she was introduced, she was also hanging around as a CMC a lot. So I don't know. She seems she seems so, like yeah. she seems like someone who's young in general. Yeah, via her behavior. Yeah. Closer to Spike's age, at least, but Spike's age is also a, a nebulous. He's a child, but exactly how much he's of a just child? Just a baby dragon. How much? Exactly how much is a weird one? Like how how do dragons age? Right. <laughs> it's a weird one. But anyway, that's really the only weird spot that I can the really major weirdness about the episode that I can think of. Other than that, this was a great episode. Well, it, it, <laughs> One well, getting back to the weird disparity thing, but it's weird because I think the episode is kind of wishy washy about it, like we said. But it almost feels like the setup for the episode is kind of felt like they're kind of closing the door on disparity with the thing of like Spike's over rarity. Yeah, it, it did because he actually straight up ignores her in the opening scene. He he's ignoring her. He doesn't even notice she's there, and he yep. he's able, willing to put her. You know, um, well put her, I guess, in the back burner for another friend. Yep. Which, yeah, that's, 
we've it's so different from his usual behavior. Usually he'll drop everything for rarity and suddenly he's just willing to put uh, someone else first. Yep. And that's that that's And then it, we have Gabby and Spike's behavior towards each other at times. Yeah, it's very much like, hmm. Is that a thing? So that kind of feels like a close of the door. And then at the end of the episode, they feel like they reopen it or something. Or make it's, the thing is also vaguely Rarity's favorite towards Spike in this episode is kind of weird, just because it's like she's always been very much ignorant of Spike's crush, sort of. They like sort re- of, yeah. They sometimes, yeah. And but now it's like all of a sudden she's um freaking out because he's not there, but it also feels like the, she's freaking out because well she she finds him useful, not because she has any feelings <laughs> for him. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's um yeah. So it feels like it tries to, and then it goes. They went. Oh wait, you know we're gonna we're gonna. It's like almost this episode was designed to initially um open or close, close the, the door, door on that, and then all of a sudden they had to re- they decided to reopen it because oh crap, the disparity ship is gonna be mad. Let him be mad. I don't know. Let him be mad. Yeah, it was written by Josh Haber, by the way. So it's, uh, that might explain some of the wishy washiness. <laughs> Maybe it's tough to say what goes. Well, I don't know. I'm sure to get those hacked script with the notes you can see exactly what happened Ugh, still shouldn't have those available anyway <laughs> again like i said that's that's i think the only real negatives i can put on the episode is just kind of weird on not entirely certain how they wanted to play that yeah but otherwise it's great because <laughs> yeah, that's always so weird when you see like Kathy Westlock's always super supportive of the disparity thing and then you got Tabitha who's always like it's kind of weird and creepy you just keep coming back to I know, it. It's because it's essential with the theme of the episode. Yes, I know. I'm trying to find more, find the good things to talk about. Because there was a lot. It was over. Because, you know, everything else about the episode. Everything else. The faces. Like, the whole rarity apologizing with the gramophone and the spotlight. and the. Yeah. It was incredible. It was, it was great. Yeah. Or but there was her, just a weirdness about that. Attempts to replace Spike with someone else. I was hoping there would be a little, like in the first, um, the Gem Cave with Applejack. I was hoping there'd be a little bit more between them. Oh yeah. It's like seriously, if you're gonna close the door on Spike, open the door for that one. Ah, <laughs> and <ain't> Spike. <laughs> and then bats. Oh no! <laughs> and then the bats happened. Oh no. I warned you all about the bats. Warned you. You know you have to have some sort of repel when you go into a bat cave. If you've ever played Pokemon, you know this. Well, like I said, this ain't Pokemon. Nope. Because, yeah, yeah, it's just just stuff like that. And then you got Rarity complaining to Twilight, who kind of tries to help Rarity work through things. Because she doesn't, Twilight doesn't know what's going on. It's like, maybe you upset him. Yes, maybe you have said, then I must apologize. For what? That doesn't matter. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not the important part. <laughs> that's not important. <laughs> oh, dear. Why does everybody or, keep asking yeah. me that? She just drags in her little fainting couch and then leaves it behind and Twilight has to deal with it. I mean, <laughs> later we see her dragging out with garbage. <laughs> yeah, she just considers it part of the trash. Just get rid of it, get it out of the castle. <laughs> and her <laughs> drags in another one. one and, well, I was like, wait. <sighs> Poor Twilight having to do stupid couches. Yep, fainting couches. How many do you have, and where are you getting them from? Do you just have, like, a subscription to quills and sofas? Store it around Ponyville in case of fainting couch emergencies. And pick up some habits from Pinky? Yeah. And there's, you know, it's also trying to get Dash to carry the fabric or Fluttershy to help with the sewing, or Pinky at the end to help with the... Gems. Yep, because apparently Applejack is not going to help again. Yeah, I, like, I ain't doing that again. Then they're done that. Bought the t-shirt. Speaking of shirts, one of Rarity's shirts is really weird because it's just a weird Hawaiian-esque shirt with gem pattern on it. Yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> that seems like something Rarity wouldn't wear, but what do I know? <laughs> yeah, what do you know? You're not the fashionista. Well, the things Rarity did to try and pull Spike away. Yeah. Apparently, there's some sort of, like, gem cavern, curv- whatever, th- what was that? The yeah. first one that's only accessible once a year. Yeah. Convenient timing on that. That and the the power ponies. And the convention. great gem crevasse. The great gem crevasse, yes. 
It's only accessible once a year, and then right after that is the Power Ponies convention. Yep. It's kind Power of surprised Ponies. Spike wasn't already planning on going to, or maybe it was sold out and somehow rare. I don't. I Rarity don't ask how Rarity up. Ben Kalp scalper prices. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Power Pony Palooza. Power Pony Palooza. I don't know they had a grand old time. Spike definitely did with the stuff he collected. Yep. And we're already dressed as maniac. Of course she did. But not... <laughs> the hair. Not Mistress Magnifique, whatever her name is. The thing she's willing to no. do for Spike. That's always in her name. I don't remember what his name was. The what? superhero name. It's been so long. Well, it was Maniac. No, not her. The one that Rarity oh, played. Oh, the back one in that. The... Oh, yeah, the Green Lantern esque yeah. version. I don't remember um, her name now. I don't remember it. Mrs. Marvelous was Applejack. Yeah, but yeah. actually, um, there's yeah, that was that whole thing, and just and then the uh, playing obelix, ogres and obelix, or was yep. it obelix oh. and ogres in this one? It's it's the inverse of Dungeons yeah, and but Dragons. That's, which one is which? So, well, Dungeons, it, it's ogres and obelix. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking about because you know the comic are the opposite. It's it, often, yeah, it's exactly. Often so you have Dungeons and Dragons. Radiance. That's what it was. Oh, Radiance. Yeah. Ha. Ah. Yes, Rarity was Radiance, but no, she dressed up as Maniac. Maybe she just didn't want to do that again. <laughs> Been there, done that. Bought the T-shirt. So the things that Rarity is willing to do. Mm-hmm. Although it, it kind of appeared like she did have fun. Yeah. Well, so it's not like she was lying. Yeah. Yeah, and it's the thing was blowing off Gabby, which I think initially, this weird thing is initially this weird thing of like, oh no, can't you know two days in a row can't you not know, spending time with each other. And it's like, and it's, yeah, uh, that to me that feels like weird. It's like you don't have to spend every day with each other. I mean, come on. Yeah, that that part did feel a bit weird. I think it's probably just for I don't, I don't know. know. It was a storytelling thing, compressed time, whatever. But it could have been done differently. If someone gets really upset and abandons you as a friend, basically, because you aren't spending literally every day with them, that's bad. <laughs> that That's really not great. Eventually you wake up in their basement. Yeah. <laughs> Some people might like that. But anyway, yes, that, that's it's not great if if they literally have to spend every single day with you and if you you know go two days without seeing them they freak out and yeah that's yeah, this weird thing was a like, rarity's being selfish the entire episode and yep just trying to yeah undermine their friendship uh spike and gabby's friendship so she could have spike all to herself yep. because of it's like once you get used reasons. to that certain amount of attention it's it's hard to go back didn't we learn this in another episode uh. the little Little rabbit. <laughs> right. Indeed. I think they just exaggerated it for the sake of the episode. Oh, yeah. Just to really get the point across, which is common, but still. <laughs> Rarity, you need to let go. But holy crap, Gabby, so do you. <laughs> yeah, it's, um... Yeah, it's kind of odd. Just kind of give... Rarity's gotten so used to be able to just using Spike for whatever she wants that when he she suddenly can all of a sudden uh oh uh oh I don't have I, my helper I don't want I don't want to carry all these heavy bags myself it's crazy just make Spike carry all the heavy bags the other thing was yeah when they did the little montage of her reminiscing about all the time Spike was there and it's like all the flowery the the filter with everything's yeah, like yep that doesn't help things <laughs> yeah so yeah that's a, that's that's uh, interesting. Beyond that, I don't know. I mean, yeah. this, this, the it, core a, thing is... It is scary. really straightforward. There's not a whole bunch of like little story plots to go and talk about. It's it, it's pretty cut and dry. I mean, yeah, the, well, the thing is, it's just the whole thing on Sparity has kind of made it... Yeah, it's like they, it seemed yeah. like the, going into this episode, it seemed like they're going to finally um, address it, and they kind of did. Kind of, and then kind of didn't. Then they undid the addressing of it, and now it's once again kind of vague in a weird nebulous holding pattern. For eternity, I guess. <laughs> yeah, because then the show will end and we won't ever know. Yeah, we're getting Leave close. it up to ca- to Fanon. I guess. I guess that's yeah, what they're going for is to I give mean, at this point, there options are, and headcanons. Yeah, after this episode, there are literally... Um, 
This was Seven 19, left. so yeah. Coming up on the end. <sighs> Final seven. Da, 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 da. Well, you know. two more episodes and we get to the final five if we want to make that Battlestar reference. Mm. It's yeah, it's it's a fun episode to watch, but it's also just it kind of weird just because of the. It's just kind of weirdly frustrating that this will not. If it wasn't for that one weirdness, just a slight change here and there. I honestly think they really should have just said, you know, if Spike and Rarity are not going to be a thing. Yeah, honestly, honestly they I, I think on that road, but I think I honestly feel also that they probably backed off from that because out of fear of uh, upsetting the, the, you know, they didn't want to upset, upset the, people too much, upset people and just change the status quo and all that sort of stuff. Status quo, which is going to end anyway, so who cares? Yeah, but they don't want to close the doors on things, I guess. I don't know. Just a couple of changes would have fixed that little bit, and because everything else about the episode was done very well, I didn't think there was any real like pacing issues. Everything else just went great. Tabitha just is just amazing. Yeah, <laughs> and her doing her little weird attempt at a cough thing didn't really work so well. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, oh, also <laughs> creepily, yeah, <laughs> jumping on Spike's bed, just waking up. Oh, jeez, that whole thing. I, I know people are already commenting on that in certain ways. Yeah. Wake up and find your years-long crush standing very excitedly over top of you. And Finally! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then Spike's just like, uh, what do you want? I don't know. It's a thing. It's I, I still think it's an enjoyable episode. Oh, yeah. It's definitely an enjoyable episode. Simply... Because of Rarity and Tabitha's job on that. But it does have that... It doesn't make the whole severity thing. It, if you're fine with that, then this is an amazing episode for you, I would think. Yep. <laughs> so, I got nothing else to add. Nope. So, moving along, we do have some fan content to talk about. So, I have got two songs that I want to feature this week. And the first one is Neverlast Standing and Polaris' remix of Best Friends Until the End of Time. This song, oh boy, it's it starts out well. The original song is is a happy song that's nice and bouncy and upbeat, and this one takes this, and it's still upbeat, but it's a different feel. It's it, it hits a lot harder, and it it especially about halfway through, it almost gets a sort of melancholic tone. Which is really interesting. I really like it. That that piano, it calms down to this piano piece halfway through that really sets that tone in. It, it's it's really, really well done. I love the sound design, the vocal chopping, just the whole flow of it and feel. It's really good. Yeah. And it's got that bounce. It does. <laughs> and and that hard that it's hard hitting yeah. instrumentation to it. And it's also weird some of the, kind of a nice echoey effect on the vocals as well. Reverb? Yeah. Yeah. Somewhat. Somewhat, yeah. It's a weird one. Uh but yeah, there's also the bit that's kind of a glitchy part, which is interesting in itself. Yep. It's all good. <laughs> and the second song I want to feature is Like a Man's Eurobeat remix of A Kirin Tale. Yes, I'm just here for the Eurobeat. <laughs> but yeah, 
make a reference to things that only people who listen to podcasts will understand. <laughs> hey, I can do that. Why not? But yes, this it, it's happy, it's upbeat, the instrumentation work on it is really good. Uh, it, it's been interesting. The instrumentation in the background of this kind of reminds me of like Sonic game sounds. It's kind of kind of got that feel to it. I I really like it, and it, the whole thing's kind of got this story. This is part of a an EP that Like a Man has released just recently, and Like a Man has been around in the fandom for a while, but has been dark, and has just recently popped up out of the shadows, releasing this EP, basically telling the story of of them and the fandom where they came from, and all the songs are basically remasters of remixes and originals that they've done in the past, and then this n- brand new one, and this is the final one of the EP, and it's a brand new song. It's really good. I would recommend going through the entire pl- a YouTube playlist that's linked beginning to end because the videos show the story and check them out. But this this song is really really good. Right. Um. Yeah. The song. It's uh, the beginning. It's kind of eighty sounding in the very very intro, and then it becomes the very fast Eurobeat thing. Let's do it. And then something happens. I don't know what it is. It's not Eurobeat in one spot, and then it gets it's bouncy. And I don't know. Something weird happens. That's it's not a, Eurobeat. But it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> good songs. Go check them out. So. How about fanfic? fanfic do we yes. have a fanfic? I got a new fanfic for we you guys. do, finally. Uh, still things not updating, weirdly enough. Like, the one that was updating pretty consistently just kind of stopped. Just, yeah. Anyway, it's a new one called We Do What We Must by G.A.P. Jaxi. Funny enough, this author has appeared before on the podcast, way back during the Unlimited You feature one of his fics. And this is a short one, cha- one shot. It's a 2200 wo- oh, 2300 words ish. Well, basically, it's an alternate universe thing where it's the Twilight's stuck in a dead end life that she doesn't like and it's a very different world it's very different it's kind of gets a little real too <laughs> i don't want to say too much but yeah it gets a little real in uh you know what Twi- twilight does throughout the fic the kind of her her what she does in general in life yeah it's like okay that hits a little hard <laughs> It's not a happy story. No. It doesn't make me feel good. I mean, it's, it's Mark's sad. Think, yeah, it is tag sad. Probably should have another tag because of the yeah, opening. The, the opening is a little... Uh, um, it's, <laughs> it's It pushes the line of a T rating. Uh, yeah, it, it really does. It probably should have a, a content tag on that one because it's it lewd. But it's it not a happy fic. It doesn't make me feel good, but I don't think it's supposed to make me feel good. Oh, yeah, it's so, Mark's sad. <laughs> Um, yeah, like you said, very real, very, like, it's, it's possibly a little too real, possibly a little too real, but it's definitely an interesting one and, and makes your, makes your head, makes you think, makes your head and then makes your heart hurt. Yes. First for Twilight and then for yourself. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yep. So yeah, it's, uh, interesting for sure. Definitely interesting. Definitely check it out if you can. (laughs) Just, yeah, it's just only a word like of warning about that first words? paragraph. Yeah. 2,300 words, just shy of that. Yeah, yeah, just word of warning, that initial paragraph really pushes the T rating kind of hard. Yeah, content warning for, for lewd subject matter for mm-hmm. the first section. It's really crazy. It's uh, written in an hour and unedited. Yes, it was a contest. Yep. Win the contest, if I remember correctly, but it was written for a contest. Anyway, that is a fan content. Go ahead and check those out if you can. I recommend you do. But that brings us to the end of this episode. I hope you liked what you heard. If you did, you can find all of our episodes, past, future, and present, at pony411.libsyn.com. You can also find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher. Just search for Pony411 on any of those. And on Google Play, you have to go to play.google.com slash music before you search. But you can find us on all of those. Go give us stars where you can give us stars. Subscribe to us where you can if you want on any of those. You can also find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash pony411. Go comment on our videos there. And don't forget to click subscribe and the bell to get notifications and all that sort of stuff. You know what to do. We are also amongst all the shows on Ponyville Live. It'll automatically update our thing when our YouTube does. Just be warned, like we warned last week... 
some people are uploading stuff to their channels and their shows with spoilers, and those are appearing on the front page of Funny Mill Live, so be warned about that one. Be cautious. We also air on Ponyville FM every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, so tune in then or tune in at any other time because it's a great place to listen to fandom music and live DJs, so check them out. If you would like to get a hold of us, you can email us. We are pony411podcast at gmail.com. So send us comments, criticisms, suggestions. If you want to say hi, it's a good place there, too. If you want us to take a look at something and talk about it on the podcast, send it to us there, and we will take a look. We are also on Facebook, facebook.com slash pony411. Go like our page there. We will post updates when they happen and all that sort of stuff. We are also on Twitter at pony411. So it's a, probably the best way to just quickly say hi or just yell random nonsense at us because that's what Twitter is. Bunch of random nonsense. And anger. And anger and dumpster fires and all that sort of stuff. It's a hell site. But everyone uses it, so we're there. Join us in our little pit of hell. <laughs> You can also find our personal Twitter accounts. I am at Alcatraz with an underscore at the end and a seven instead of a T, and they are at Nemesis Prime One. Yep. So go follow us there, tweet us there, see what we tweet. You're just tweeting more Transformers stuff, and I'm mm. tweeting angry things about my car. Or I did. Optimus Prime pointing at Optimus Prime. Like Spider Man. That is the end of the episode. Again, hope you liked what you heard. We hope you tune in next week when we talk about the next episode. A horse shoe in. Ah, horse puns. Yeah. It's a Starlight episode. This will be a fun one. Depending on your definition of fun. We shall see. You've seen it. I haven't. Uh So, I guess we'll find out next week. But until then, remember, please, pony responsibly. See ya. Bye. Bye.